Hi, I'm Mark Zip from Crocker Farm Auction. I wanted to show you all a nice array of multi-glazed redware from Strasburg, Virginia in the Shenandoah Valley that we'll be selling in our March 2nd auction. Um, as you can see, multi-glaze or polychrome glazed earthenware, as some people call it, uh, was, was produced in a variety of forms by both the Bells and Everleys in Strasburg, Virginia uh, during the latter part of the 19th century. And one of the fun things about collecting multi-glaze is that you do get a variety of, of forms and glazes. Uh, even on you know, pitchers, for example, even on a, sing, uh, a single form. Uh, you can see here, uh, this is one of the nicest uh, multi-glaze pitchers that, that I've seen in a while. It has that cream-colored slip over the orange clay surface and actually how this was done was it, the, the piece once it had, had dried after being uh, turned on the wheel was actually dunked in uh, white slip and you can see where it took in some places and where it, where it didn't and that all adds to the interest of the piece, the, the uniqueness of it, no two pieces are alike. Um, you can see after, after it was uh, dunked in that white slip it was decorated with copper glaze splashed throughout and then uh, covered in a clear lead glaze. And that lead gives the, gives the white slip a sort of attractive cream color to it. Um, you can see on the inside there's, there's no copper. Um, it's just slip and uh, lead glaze and orange clay. Um, these pieces are very colorful and that's one of the reasons why they're so desirable but this is a particularly exceptional piece because of the amount of copper that was used and there's actually no manganese uh, that you normally see on these multi-glaze pieces so it's, it survives in great condition, has a great green glaze and this, this form is somewhat unusual as well, this real nice bulbous fat form that people really like. Um, you can see here's another multi-glaze picture uh, and here's another, both uh, fairly typical in size and form and glaze. Uh, sometimes they have ribbed handles and other times they don't. But they almost always have that footed base and sometimes they're a little more ovoid than others. This might be an Everly example and, and this could very well be a Bell example um, because of the shape of it. It's a little more ovoid. Uh, but uh, you can also see that, that this, this has a similar technique of cream colored slip uh, with green and brown over top of it. However, uh, how it's fired and how the glaze is applied is different on each example, so you get a variety of different colors. Um, this example is interesting because not only is it a toy pitcher uh, that descended in the Cooley family of uh, Strasburg, Virginia, and uh, one of the Cooleys actually married R.F. Bell, uh, the nephew of Solomon Bell and the son of Samuel Bell. And this is sent in their family, and so we know this is a Bell example. It has, it has a decent amount of repair on it, but it's certainly worth repairing because of the rare uh, size of it. But the interesting thing about it is you can see this light colored clay, it actually didn't have a slip coating. It was actually made out of a yellowish, almost like a yellowware, a yellow earthenware clay. And, um, was decorated typically with, with uh, the, the typical glaze of, of uh, manganese copper and a clear lead overglaze. But, but what looks like a slip is actually the clay itself, which is kind of interesting. You can see the, the sort of different things that they were fooling around with down there. Um, this is a fairly typical cuspidor, probably Everly. has a nice flared top. This form's a little more desirable than the rounded uh, spittoons that they made with the enclosed tops and it has nice tooling around the midsection that typical splash manganese and copper over a slip wash you can see on the surface very nice color and this is a very nice large sized wall pocket um, it's unusual because it's a little bit larger than most of the footed based uh, wall pockets that you see it has a crimped rim uh, a, uh, a, a cut rim if you will which, which is unusual um, you normally don't see that on footed wall pockets from the valley. Uh, this, this could be a Bell example or an Everly example. I've heard that most Everly examples are the footed kind, so perhaps it's Everly, but a very nice example. Um, I just thought I'd show you all these things. You can see the variations in the, in the, in the glaze uh, applied to these pieces and how they fire differently, and we're very happy to offer them.